Here we are with Sonoya Mizuno. And you are playing Maggie. So what's your take on Maggie the cat? What are you doing? What's your little tweak to this? Um, what's my little tweak? I mean, I don't know if it's my tweak, but I feel like um, Maggie, even though she was written in the 50s, she's a very modern woman anyway. So it, I think initially it feels like a stretch. You know, obviously she's from the South and I'm from the UK and that kind of thing. But what I actually think is she is a modern woman and, and many women can understand what she's going through and she's in this relationship which is very unsatisfying and she's been made to live in these conditions which aren't fair on her and um, she is trying to change things to make it better for herself and I can understand that just like many women of today can understand that. But I think also, um, you know, the, the thing is, is it's all, I don't know if it's my take on her, but there's so much in the writing because it's such a brilliant character and there's so much colour in the character. So I guess what I'm trying to do is just bring that all out, you know, the humour and the sadness and the vulnerability and the, the coldness and the anger, you know, there's a lot there to play with. Yeah, she's the original woman who persists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the that's the thing, and I think that you know, there's a lot of women who feel like they need to persist today. So in that way, she's she's very relevant, which is kind of an extraordinary, really, considering she was written in 1955 or whenever it was. What makes you think she clings so hard to Brick and and really wants to make this relationship work? Well, I think it's um, it's complicated. I don't think it's just one thing. I think, first and foremost, she does love him. I think she really, truly loves him. And he is this kind of very special person who is, you know, there's lots of good-looking or interesting people in this world, but there are very few who are, like, godlike. And I think, to to Maggie he is godlike in his beauty and his in you know the way she fell in love with him when he was younger but I think also you, you know that Maggie's history growing up poor is so deeply embedded in her psyche and is so so scary for her to think that she might ever have to go back to that place it's like something that would you know she would she she said she would rather die she would rather she would stab herself she would rather he hit her with a crutch because to be poor is just like a living nightmare for her so it's so important that she can hold on to this relationship because it's a means of survival for her no, I've always thought it was the ultimate survivor yes. and so what do you think about cat on a hot to roof what do you think it means um, well, I mean, it's it's such a brilliant title, isn't I know, it? I love, the I love it. You're Maggie the cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. the you're the titular character. Yeah. I um, I was actually reading about where it came from, and apparently, it's it's actually from Tennessee Williams's father. He used to say that to his wife Edwina because he would she would make him feel like a cat on a hot tin roof because their relationship was so fraught. So I thought that was interesting. But um, it's such a brilliant title because it gives so much sensory information to what Maggie feels like. And I have a cat who I adore, and all I have to do is imagine my cat on a hot tin roof and understand, like, you know, where do you go? How do you get comfort? Can you stop moving? Is there a kind of cool place you can relax in? Or do you just have to keep hopping from one to another? Is anyone hearing you scream? It just, you know, there's so much in those words to play with. I agree. Well, thank you very much. And I'm really so looking much. forward to this. Oh, I, I love yeah. Tennessee Williams. Yeah, I love him too. And the more I'm, you know, doing this, the more I learn about him and his life and, his, and also this play in the context of his life, the more kind of amazing and rich it, or the material becomes, you know.
that you could find poetry in life is just remarkable. I know, I know, especially the life he had and how, you know, difficult it was for him at some times. He had he was a real poet, you're right, a real kind of wordsmith and kind of extraordinary genius actually. So I'm very honored to be doing this.